vision for the first time. Um, this is ancient language first day with the acronym uh, Alpha, and this is the second time, second time it's ever run in Tel Angels history, and uh, we hope it will help you today to basically give you some resources, study skills, and strategies to overcome the initial shock of studying an ancient language here at Macquarie University. And um, so first we're just gonna, before I explain a bit more about Alpha, we're just gonna introduce ourselves and um, basically what languages you're studying um, and uh, if you know any other languages that you've studied in the past and one word from uh, the language you're studying at the moment or languages that you're studying at the moment that you know, um, just for interest's sake, your favorite word so far. So, um, my name is Evan, and <laughs> some of you probably already know me from uh, the Latin past sessions, but um, I've studied two years of Latin and two years of Greek, or I'm kind of doing, hopefully, kind of third year this year, and I'm in my honours year, uh, I'm doing a thesis on Cicero. And I hadn't studied any languages, really, except for kind of some, some hotter, Indonesian um, before I came to Macquarie, and so I was in exactly the same boat as many of you maybe are, um, without any language experience, and was quite shocked when I had to learn all these things about Latin in my first year. So, my favourite Latin word, I guess, would be, I don't know, um, it would have to be something like glis, which is a dormouse in Latin. Um, quite an odd word, but you learn it in second year because one of the lecturers loves using that word just for the sake of comic value. <laughs> so, I'll Hi. pass on to Ellen. Yep. Hi everyone, I'm Ellen. Um, I'm in my third year of the Bachelor of Ancient History, and I've done three semesters of Greek, also three semesters of hieroglyphs, and I'm currently studying Coptic as well. And I suppose like most people, you dabble in a bit of languages at high school, you might do a little bit here and there as well. But like Evan, my serious ancient language study happened in my first year with Greek. Um, and my favourite word, I'll choose, I'll try to give you one in Greek and Coptic and Hieros. <laughs> a word that instills both love and fear when we hear it, mother. <laughs> mother, so in Greek it's meter, I believe. In Egyptian it's mut, and in Coptic it's ma'al. <laughs> um, hi everyone, my name is Milena. Um, I'm also in my third year of the Bachelor of Ancient History. And I've done uh, two semesters of hieroglyphs. I'm in my third semester for Coptic and I'm just starting Greek, which is a difficult out of all of them, I have to say. Um, I think it um, would be the verb in Coptic, sotem, which we need to hear. They couldn't have said them in hieroglyphs. My name is Liz. I'm in my third year of Bachelor of Ancient History. Um, I did a little, little bit of Italian at high school, um, so that helped me when I came to study Latin at Macquarie. Um, I've done a bit of Greek as well, but Latin is really my calling, um, <laughs> you could say. Um, my favourite Latin word, probably just because of the person who taught it to me a lot of, is probably Waco, just because it's really funny. <laughs> Anyways, 
Has everyone got a uh, fight free cap document? Yeah, everyone got the handout? Terms and um, you kind of find yourself saying, like, it's all Greek to me, kind of thing, and it really is. <laughs> so, um, what we've um, one of the first resources we've kind of devised um, from our own experience is the fact that when we came to learning an ancient language, we didn't actually we found very quickly that we didn't actually know the grammar of our own language, our own native tongue, English, and um, in so many of the ancient languages, we've used English grammatical concepts to describe um, ancient grammatical concepts. And so you can't really get anywhere unless you know the grammar of your own language first, quite um, in a detailed manner, rather than just, this is a noun, and this is a verb, and those are kind of the only two concepts I know. Um, so we've devised a guide which you can access um, on the Telly's Angels website. Um, and it's free and it's in lots of divided sections. So you don't have to download one massive document. You can just download what's applicable to you at your certain stage. So you might be encountering nouns this week. I know that people in Latin are um, and you're encountering cases and you're kind of going, what's a case? What's a case? Like we don't really know what cases are and we don't know how they work and how they fit into what I know of English and how I speak English. And <coughs> If you can't fit it into your knowledge of English, then how can you translate it into English? That's one of the major problems. So I might just go to the web, web page, if I can, and just quickly show you where you can access that. So this is the, the wonderful home page of Telly's Angels. Um, and for all your resources, you go to the nice Egyptian lady there holding a bunch of scrolls. And uh, you can go to ancient language first aid and then we've got all the resources there so see here we've got the first aid kit so we've got nouns pronouns adjectives, adjectives verbs all of those are uh, covered in a guide um, devised by the lovely Bronca power in association with others um, <laughs> and um, basically hopefully um, you'll be able to refer to that when you're stuck one late night and going, I just don't understand prepositions and I need to see it in English and see how they work in English before I can even think about them in Greek, hieroglyphics, Latin, Coptic, whatever. So we're not going to go through those uh, grammar kits now because it will just take up too much time, but hopefully you can use those um, for, um, further on in your studies. Um, but now I'm going to hand over to Ellen, who's going to go through some other techniques that are central to language learning. 